Welcome, everybody. This is our uh, our uh, November 9th meeting. Is, uh, we aren't opening our official meeting. This is a workshop to uh, have the fire chief discuss a safer grant with us. Is uh, This is looking at possibly putting on some additional firefighters with some grant money. And uh, we're going to hear from Dennis and Lisa Vargas about whether we can afford this or how we can afford this. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, first off, I'm not sure how much information the town manager provided uh, for review prior to this meeting. We have we had some stuff sent to us over the over email, so. Well, the the issue that Berwick Fire is having right now is is staffing, and that involves on call force, as well as per diem staff and our full time career staff. Uh, we presently have uh, five full time career people, a chief, and four firefighters. Uh, they run uh, four shifts. 24-hour shifts, seven days a week, 375 days a year. Right now, we have scheduled one per diem uh, firefighter to come in and work with that one full-time career guy 24-7. Um, and we're running into problems with staffing levels on the on-call side because of the state mandate on vaccinations. We've lost at least two people, to my knowledge, right now. Possibly there may be a couple more here shortly. So knowing that FEMA, uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, comes out every year and provides grant, op grant opportunities to the towns, uh, I thought it might be a good recommendation to the board to at least look at the SAFER grant. SAFER grant is a grant provided by uh, FEMA for adequate fire and emergency response personnel, or you can actually uh, submit applications to um, do recruitment programs. And in fact, we did that in 2013, um, right after the uh, fire department study that was conducted. That was one of their recommendations. Uh, that hasn't panned out very well. We don't have a lot of uh, participation uh, and I don't have the answers as to why we pay an hourly rate and we have been for a number of years now um, So I thought it would be a good idea to at least bring to the board uh, Going by last year's standards not this year's standards because the guidance hasn't come out or been published yet uh, Should be published within the next couple of weeks um, It's a three-year grant I'm looking at four staff one for each shift. Um, as I said, it's a three-year grant and it's totally paid for for that three-year period. Um, staffing is an issue. Uh, we also, as you know, we do medical aid uh, for the town. Uh, probably three-quarters of our calls are actually EMS calls. When we have people tied up, there's usually two guys, persons on that vehicle. They're, any, they're there on scene anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. And during that time, I'm it. I'm the only one available. Um, and that has created some issues, uh, not because of me, but because of only one person. Um, so I thought it would give the town a good opportunity to plan ahead a little bit. Um, as you know, from what I'm hearing, the town's growth is going to increase somewhat over the next three to five years. Uh, so we're just trying to plan ahead a little bit as far as the safer grant goes. Um, the call for, like I said, we pay our on-call people anywhere from $12.50 an hour up to $23 an hour. So, you know, it's not that we're not doing things to entice. It's just people aren't joining. Um, I think it has to do a lot with our on-call people having full-time jobs, got to get up in the morning at 3 o'clock, they don't want to get up and go for a call. It's not like the dedication that we used to have years ago where you get up, it didn't matter what time it was. Uh, but that's not there today, so um, my job looking forward 
what's the future and what the town and the protection needs. Uh, I would highly recommend that you authorize at least applying for the grant. Um, as far as at the end of that grant period, uh, like I said, we have uh, one per diem right now, which costs the town about $157,000 a year. Last budget season, I put in for a second per diem, uh, which was turned down because of cost and, and the funding at the time. But my intent would be to put in for a second per diem this upcoming budget season. If the town uh, approves that, that would give us around $300,000 at the end of the three-year cycle of the, the uh, Safer Grant staff to keep them on the payroll. We'd have to add whatever it comes out to, 80000 to do that. But I think it would be in the town's best interest. It would also allow us to possibly upgrade our medical. Uh, we provide basic EMTs right now. Uh, we would have the opportunity to increase that level to a paramedic level service. So, um, any questions for the chief? I got a couple. You use your microphone. Oh. If you would, we are live. Sorry, I apologize for being a little late. How are you, Mike? Okay. I'll let you go first if you want. Okay. <laughs> So again, I apologize for being late. Traffic's a little heavy. So uh, I'm, I'm just looking at a couple of clarifying questions. So what I read in here is you're looking for three uh, full-time uh, firefighters slash paramedics. Right now you have basic paramedics on board. What is the... Uh, we don't have at this point... We're not licensed for the paramedic level. We're okay. only licensed for the basic level. And what would it entail to get licensed? Uh, additional equipment and higher basic, I mean, uh, paramedics with license to be able to practice that level. Okay. So my question then comes to that is, so everything is hunky-dory and we, and we say, okay, we bring three of these on. That's four, by the way, not three. Four. Okay. Um, where would you where would you obtain these? Because my understanding, uh, and I, and I could be wrong, is that there's a shortage in the state to begin with. There is. I can't I can't tell what the future is going to bring. Mm -hmm. What I'm suggesting to the board is that there's an opportunity there to provide the residents of Berwick with that level of service, providing we can find the people trained at that level of service. I can't sit here tonight and guarantee I'm going to hire paramedics. I may not be able to get them. Right. So that, that takes me to my next part is because we're in such a shortage, how does this apply um, to the current staff now? Could we potentially, and again, I'm spitballing here, potentially um, upgrade a firefighter that we have now to a paramedic level by supporting them with the right education and whatnot if we come into some sort of agreement that if we provide this invocation you're going to sign to stay with us for the next five plus years absolutely that could be done we offer that not that level at this point because i don't have the funding to be able to right. do that but yes we do offer so the offer advance which is in between basic and paramedic mm -hmm. and paramedic we have supported that and we'll continue to support that for the people we have right now Okay, and can this money be used, utilized for that? No. It can't. It can only be used for full time. Right. Okay. I can go after other grants for training funds in order mm -hmm. to accomplish that, yes. Oh. But that particular grant can't be used for that. Oh. Okay. And you're looking for four, four. not we three. We have four shifts. Yep. We run 24-7 with one full-timer and one per diem right now. So, and you're saying, uh, you're saying, how, what's the cost of one? Per diem or mm -hmm. full-time? One full-time paramedic. Uh, I can tell you what the cost of, maybe Lisa can tell you what the cost is of one full-time firefighter. I don't have it off the top of my head right now. No, just estimates. But I'm just trying basic. to. basic. Um, Lisa, can you help me out? 
You're muted. You're muted, Lisa. Oh. <laughs> I said, hold on, let me look at my spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't got any. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, That's why she's here. <laughs> I'm running my head. It, it's yep. workshop, right? Right. Yep. So I'm just right. asking yep. questions to right. no, no, formulate no it in my head because I, I think these grants are great because they open up doors and avenues that don't exist. My only concern is um, how do we recruit someone who's qualified for one of these positions um, if they feel like, well, if I go to Berwick and I'm on this grant, I'm there for three years, and then I'm dropped. So what is the cost, and how do we implement that into the budget, even if we do it in increments over three years, to ensure that we can give them some sort of reliability? Hey, come to Berwick. We're supportive. We want to kick this program off by utilizing grant funds. But how do we recruit away from some of the larger departments if there's no stability, if there's no, hey, in three years, sorry, but we don't have the budget for you anymore, take all that experience and training and go to a larger department. So that's why I was curious, how much does it cost for one firefighter per year? Okay, so right now, now currently we have four full-time firefighters mm -hmm. slash EMT, and we're paying anywhere between 70 Four thousand eight thirty-five to ninety-six two fifty-four, depending on experience, their level, and um, years of service. Okay. Annually, so four in Berwick. That's just that's just salary. That's, that's just, just salary. salary, not benefits? That's everything. That's everything. Their health insurance, their... Oh, so that's... Their, okay. uh, salary uh, and benefits. And benefits, yes. Okay, salary and benefits. Okay. So now you say that times four. That's, that's my... And that's my only concern. I think these things are great, and I am supportive of doing that. I just... Where there's already a shortage, how do we put the flag out there and say, hey, come to Berwick? And they go, yeah, but what happens in three years? Are you going to drop me? I think my gut feeling is with this whole process, as I had indicated, we have right now one per diem. That one per diem costs the town 157000 something like that. My goal is to put another per diem on this year because I need the help in order to move this forward. And that would give us two, which would bring it up around $300,000 at the end of the third year grant process. Unfortunately, there's still an additional cost that if we want to keep them, the town's going to have to pick up. Yeah, no, I agree. It, and it is, as, far, as far as retaining them is... We, we run that risk anyways with oh, yeah. not just our firemen, but our policemen and everybody, you know. Oh, absolutely. It, is, you know, is everybody's looking for a greener pasture, and so is, you can't guarantee that anybody's going to be here next year. Right. No, I, I understand that. I'm just saying is I think Berwick offers a lot, especially where we're located, the department. We have a, I mean, um, we have a brand new station. We have a, a good crew. So if we want to recruit someone with the qualifications, like you said, of the, of the paramedic, and they're going to relocate their family or whatnot to Berwick, and we want that, how do we, um, how do we offer something that the other departments aren't? And that could be stability. And maybe that's the back, what we should be back looking at is, yeah, I mean, I'm fully in support of getting, to applying for all four grants, in the meantime, we should also be doing some work as a board to find the money. And you said one per diem costs about 150000 Well, that's about two full-time positions. If you have two, that's four. So sometime in this period, we've got to come up with the money to, to give these guys some reassurance. Because no one who's qualified, it doesn't make sense. You have somebody in, in a larger city who's qualified, and you open up the position, the grant position, you post it out there, <laughs> What's going to make them leave their seniority and their secure position to risk coming here? We need to give them some sort of reassurance that, not a, not a guarantee, that you can't do that a budget year,
but it's just some <coughs> sort of you have a commitment that the board is going to work to continue these positions long past the three years. That's what I'm. That's all I'm saying. Because I, I have, you know, looking through some of the numbers and everything else is, uh, and I read this, <coughs> I do believe that we need more qualified full-time firefighters here than just four. And per diems are great, but having a volunteer force is difficult to, to balance. Well, right um, now, even keeping our per diems <coughs> is difficult to balance. Yeah. These per diems work for maybe full-time other departments, mm -hmm. or they may work for two or three other departments as a per diem. Right. They get no benefits, they get nothing. Right. Uh, you know, initially when we started out, I think we had about six, we're down to about four right now. Um, but I've got on-call people right now covering shifts, those shifts that I need to cover, and they're working 45, 60 hours a week just to cover those shifts. That's not going to last forever. No, it's not. My full-timers are being forced in, or will be forced in here shortly. That's not going to last forever. It's not sustainable. Berwick provides good benefits. They, they provide good pay. Out of all the people that we've had since we started, I might have lost one, so they went to a different department. Uh, have on-call guys that are getting hired every day. So the Sanford just hired two of my guys. So it's, it's just a fluctuation of everything the way it is right now. Yeah. And COVID did not help anybody. Yeah. No, I... I agree. I just think that in this conversation, we should also talk about the work that we need to do as a board to find the funding to be well, able to back that, this up. That, that's what our budget workshops yeah. come to. I, I, I understand <laughs> that. I'm just... Believe me, we'll have enough of those to go. <laughs> um, because we get, if we get approved the grants, you know, we apply and we get approved the four grants and then we put it out there. Um, and we don't have any applicants, well, then we're still in the same spot. We have to make ourselves appealing to people. Um, and I think one of it is, and again, you can't guarantee that. Right. That's the budget process. But a commitment from the board to try to, to fund those positions, is, I think, is important, too. And, uh, and sorry, I don't, Mike, jump in any. I know you had some questions, no, that's, too. That's, I mean, Linda, you really kind of hit where I, where I was going with it. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to... I was doing some math at the per diem, and then we kind of circled back around to it too. Where you know, having having those full time forces actually more beneficial, you know, even even from a cost perspective. Once we get yeah. that in, I I guess my my question to Dennis is, you know, uh, um, you know, you, you alluded to the vaccine mandates possibly forcing a couple out or, or taking that step sideways for a little bit. If we get approved these grants, is it? Is it use or lose? Is there a way we can turn this money into a recruiting effort? What, you know, because I, I mean, I'm sure Linda can attest too with, with what she's seen for applicants. I mean, me and I, I can put a now hiring and incentive up and it's, we're not seeing applicants for any position out there, um, let alone public safety. Um, yeah. You know, I guess if we get approved, what, what can we do to maximize this? You know, do we just, because I can't see people just coming running all of a sudden and going, oh, Berwick's got three openings and, and now we're going to be there and we got people to choose from. Right. right. Um, How do we attract them? Yeah. To try and answer your question, uh, like I said, it hasn't come out with their guidance yet for the safe okay. grant. They will be coming out here within the next week. That was one of the reasons why, um, and I appreciate the board meeting tonight, at least because the, it is going to open up sooner than I thought. Um, but to answer your question, uh, we go through the grant process, we write the grant, we submit it. If we're fortunate enough to get selected, you know, there's thousands of departments out there putting in for all kinds of grants. Right. If we get selected, uh, we will be notified, <clears throat> the board will be notified, and at that point, if um, we start the process, uh, you have so many days, like 180 days, to be able to start the ball uh, moving. If for some reason we can't get applicants, we ask for an extension through the federal government, they will give us an extension because of the circumstances. How long that extension will, will be for will depend upon what's going on at the time. So there are ways to work with it. The bottom line is if we can't find applicants, then we may not, we may end up losing the money. Right. Hmm. Um, uh, 
that's the way it works. And there's right. no guarantee we're going to get it in the first place. But oh, it's worth a try. I mean, I that's my. That's what opinion. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we're looking at. I think we're looking at two separate discussions. Uh, you know, the first one is, do we go forward with applying for the grant, which I'm a thousand percent on board with. I think it only benefits the town and, and the force and, and even your, your team right now with some, you know, some support of extra bodies and, you know, to take care of things. And I, I think that goes a long way. And then the second discussion is how do we really look at what we need as a town you know, for sustainability for, for, for extra firefighters as, as we grow and, and what that's going to look like, you know, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to mix the two, you know, but, but I definitely think going after this, the grants, the way to go, you know, but I think if, if accepted, we really need to take a hard look at how do we keep it sustainable, you know, over time. Exactly. Lisa, if I can ask you a question about the budget process and everything um, is, if we hire, if we were to get the grant and hire four full-time people, um, would that streamline the the payroll budget? Because you have somebody on full-time and not have to worry about the per diem and figuring out the hours every week and everything. How would that work? Um, well, I don't think it will streamline it any more than it's already streamlined. We already have. Um, software in place that is being utilized to streamline the payroll process. Um, it, it could help on the fire department side because they're the ones that are doing the, the data entry for the hours um, for the per diems. But I, this, um, Dennis, does this eliminate per diems or just take the place of some? The intent would be is to hold on to the per diems until such time as we get to the end of the three-year period, and then go from that point. So the, the per diems would only be used as needed? So they, they, well, until you get the full-timers on board, right. if we get the grant, until you get the four people on board, you get them trained, the per diems are still got to cover. Right. Right. Once they get trained and they're on their own, up until the end of that third year, I would say hang on to them because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. And I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. At the end of that third year, that funding can go towards three years from now, you may all decide to do something else. But that's right. what I'm looking three, at. Right three now. years now, we all may be different here. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever. But, you know, with, with the town growing, with, with everything that's going on, and there is going to be a time when there have been occasions where I haven't been able to send a truck to a call because my two guys were tied up. It, that's the fact of life, yeah. and that's not fair to my firefighters, and it's not fair to the residents of Broward. Right. You expect a service, you should be getting that service. And all I'm trying to do is make you aware of the issues we're running into. Right. No, I, I agree. I think step one is we definitely apply for the grant. It's absolutely worth it. At least apply. You, you don't get anything if you don't apply. And then, uh, and then further workshops will be needed to figure out. And I agree, you keep the per diems because the grant's paying for them for the first three years. Keep the per diems because people come and go anyways. Right. So there's no additional cost there. And then at the end of the three years, look at the economics of Just remember, do we cut down? Per diem, you're only talking three staff, three right. people. Sure. You know, if you look at the standards that are out there, odd sized town or community we're considered a rural district. We should be providing six people in 14 minutes, 80% of the time. Mm. I can't meet that standard. Yeah. I'm lucky if I right now meet two people in 14 minutes, 18% of the time. But I understand there's a cost to that, but that's what the standard is we should be meeting. I realize you're not gonna meet it today, but there are standards we have to go by. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. Any other questions of the chief or Lisa or town manager or anybody? Well, what's the next step? Are you are you prepared to submit the grant? And is it all? I've already started to write the grant. Mm -hmm. uh, before it's submitted, I'll have uh, the town manager take a look at it, make sure he's okay with it, mm -hmm. or anybody else that wants to look at it. Um, 
hopefully it'll get submitted and uh, hopefully when, when's the deadline um, the grant that's out right now is for PPE personal protective equipment um, and I'm applying for one of those as well looking for uh, bunker gear uh, and uh, Scott air packs or air packs I shouldn't say Scott because I can't really do that um, that grant opened up Monday I'm going to have that done by, I think it closes December, uh, November 18th, and right after that is when the SAFER grant opens up, and that closes sometime in December. Initially, it was supposed to up, open up in January, so I figured it would be right about a time of budget season we could all sit down and talk, but it didn't work out that way. And no. if I'm going to do it, I need, first of all, authorization, and then we'll get it done. Right. Um, yeah, yeah I'm... Look, Dennis, I'm, I'm all for going for it. I mean, I think it's it's a huge step. And like you said, who knows? I mean, look, we can't predict two, three years from now. Now, anyways, what that's going to look like, what that need's going to look like, what, you know, what COVID's going to have for an impact, where we're going to be standing at. So, I mean, you know, let's, let's look at what's in front of us and anything that gets the department help or any chance that we have to get the department assistance and help, I, I, I think we should be all over. Um. um. Um, when, when he says authorization, do we have to take a vote in the meeting tonight, or is that something more informal? Well, we can't we can't we can't take a vote during the workshop, anyways. But no, that's what I mean. But I mean, I mean during the actual meeting tonight is what I mean. I, I guess personally, I don't need a vote. It's a, up to the board. I just it should be documented someplace that the right. board approved me going forward with it. Right. Uh, to keep me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's keep, keep everybody out of trouble. That's the that's way, right. way we need to go. So it, it, that's why I was asking about the timeline, though, is uh, for the SAFER grant, is we can you know, vote on it at our next meeting. You know, have everything in front of us and everything, and, and vote on the next, next meeting and still have plenty of time to you know, apply for the grant. So that shouldn't be no problem. When's right? our next meeting? Two weeks. 18th. 18th. Right. That's all right. So okay. when you say you want everything in front of you, you mean, oh, I don't need the, the grant and everything. But no, 23rd. I just want to make sure I Thank understand you. what you're asking. Yeah. So yeah. It, just to, we'll have, the, have a chance for the rest of the, for the board to you know, look at it some more and everything, and, and the, you know, the town manager to go over it some more. And, and that way we'll have everything in place so at our next meeting we can just go through the formalization of voting to yeah. we'll authorize it. Hopefully I'll have it done that later. So, <laughs> But uh, but I, I know I am for the workshop purposes and just for you as you're working on this. I think everyone is the same thing. Is we're definitely in support of applying for it, yes. you know. And then we'll get together and take the next steps to figure out how we get the right people here. Right. So I think continue on. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. That's Thank it. You. Is I'll uh, close the workshop. Is we have about 33 minutes to uh, our regular meeting. We're gonna take a break. All right.